We did not want to get into trouble for not going to school. The neatly dressed boys about my age got off. They carried books under their arms. After they crossed the street, the bus drove away. Roberto and I came out from hiding and joined Papa. Tienen que tener cuidado, he warned us. After lunch, we went back to work. The sun kept beating down. The buzzing insects, the wet sweat, and the high dot dry dust made the afternoon seem to last forever. Finally, the mountains around the valley reached out and swallowed the sun. Within an hour, it was too dark to continue picking. The vines blanketed the grapes, making it difficult to see the bunches. Vamanos, said Papa, signaling us that it was time to quit work. Papa then took a pencil and began to figure out how much we had earned for our first day. He wrote down numbers, crossed them out, wrote down some more. Quince, he murmured. When we arrived home, we took a cold shower underneath a water hose. We then sat down to eat dinner around some wooden crates that served as a table. Mama had cooked a special meal for us. We had rice and tortilla with carne con chile, my favorite dish. The next morning, I could hardly move. My body ached all over. I felt little control over my arms and legs. This morning, this feeling went on every morning for days until my muscles finally got used to the work. It was Monday, the first week in November. The grape season was over and I could now go to school. I woke up early that morning and lay in bed, looking at the stars and savoring the thought of not going to work and of starting sixth grade for the first time that year. Since I could not sleep, I decided to get up and join Papa and Roberto at breakfast. I sat at the table across from Roberto, but I kept my head down. I did not want to look up and face him. I knew he was sad. He was not going to school today. He was not going to school tomorrow or next week or next month. He would not go until the cotton season was over, and that was sometime in February. I rubbed my hands together and watched the dry, acid-stained skin fall to the floor in little rolls. When Papa and Roberto left for work, I felt relief. I walked to the top of the small grade next to the shack, and I watched the carcaracha disappear in the distance and a cloud of dust. Two hours later, around 8 o'clock, I stood by the side of the road waiting for the school bus number 20. When it arrived, I climbed in. Everyone was busy either talking or yelling. I sat in an empty seat in the back. When the bus stopped in front of the school, I felt very nervous. I looked out the bus window and saw boys and girls carrying books under their arms. I put my hands in my pants pocket and walked to the principal's office. When I entered, I heard a woman's voice say, May I help you? I was startled. I had not heard English in months. For a few seconds, I remained speechless. I looked at the lady who waited for an answer. My first instinct was to answer her in Spanish, but I held back. Finally, after struggling for English words, I managed to tell her that I wanted to enroll in sixth grade. After answering many questions, I was led to the classroom. Mr. Lima, the sixth grade teacher, greeted me and assigned me a desk. He then introduced me to the class. I was so nervous and scared that at the moment everyone's eyes was on me, I wished I was with Papa and Roberto picking cotton. After taking roll, Mr. Lima gave the class an assignment for the first hour. The first thing we have to do this morning is to finish reading the story we began yesterday, he had said enthusiastically. He walked up to me, handed me an English book, and asked me to read. We are on page 125, he said politely. When I heard this, I felt blood rush to my head. I felt dizzy. Would you like to read, he asked hesitantly. I opened the book to page 125. My mouth was dry. My eyes began to water. I could not begin. You may read later, Mr. Lima said understandingly. During recess, I went into the restrooms and opened my English book to page 125. I began to read in a low voice, pretending I was in class. There are many words I did not know. I closed the book and headed back to the classroom. 
Mr. Lima was at his desk, sitting at his desk, correcting papers. When I entered, he looked up at me and smiled. I felt better. I walked up to him and asked me if he could help me with the new words. Gladly, he said. The rest of the month, I spent my lunch hours working in English with Mr. Lima, my best friend at school. One Friday during lunch hour, Mr. Lima asked me to take a walk with him to the music room. Do you like music? He asked me as we entered the building. Yes, I like corridos, I answered. He then picked up a trumpet, blew on it, and handed it to me. The sound gave me goosebumps. I knew that sound. I had heard it in many corridos. How would you like to learn how to play it, he asked. He must have read my face before I could answer, he added. I'll teach you how to play it during our lunch hours. That day, I could hardly wait to tell Papa and Mama the great news. As I got off the bus, my little brothers and sisters ran up to meet me. They were yelling and screaming. I thought they were happy to see me, but when I opened the door to our shack, I saw that everything we owned was neatly packed up in cardboard boxes.